I feel privileged to represent the Republic of Serbia at this important place and at the highest level world forum in working on the most important topic of today, promoting climate awareness. We all agree that we must make investment into climate and, and environment. We all likewise agree that future generations must be educated in order not to repeat the mistakes we made by hurting the only planet that makes life possible. I'm very honored that the Republic of Serbia is co-chairing this year's conference as a non-EU representative of the Eastern Europe Group. In concrete terms, we see special contribution of our expert team in finalizing negotiations on implementation of Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, which refers to establishment of global market and non-market me mechanisms for reducing greenhouse gas emissions as well as to remaining provisions referring to advanced transparency framework and common timeframes for nationally determined contributions, which are the key provisions of the agreement that have not yet been covered by the decision that is to be adopted by the conference, i.e. all member states. We therefore believe that this is an exceptional opportunity for Serbia to give its full contribution to finalization of negotiations, which we hope will secure full implementation of the Paris Agreement. As a result of strong economic development modeled for Serbia by 2050, the impact of implementation of climate measures to employment will be optimal through new jobs creation and creation of new industries which have not existed so far. One billion euro was raised at the first green bonds auction in Serbia, which clearly confirms trust of international investors to our green agenda but also to economic and political stability of our country. Incomes from green bonds issuance will be used for financing renewables, energy efficiency, sustainable water management, prevention of pollution and circular economy development and biodiversity preservation. And as you can see, dear friends, my people made a terrific speech for me. But I'm going to add a few more words and a few more questions for those that are coming from big powers and uh, that haven't answered yet on several questions. Number one is how we're going to finance all these activities. We heard the story of trillion of dollars that are at our disposal. My question would be what would be the interest rate, what would be the terms for taking these amounts of money and uh, actually how we're going to tackle that issue. Number two, how are we going to treat nuclear power plants? Are we going to shut them all or we are going to build them more? Then how are we going to build more renewables? If we already started endorsing populist movements against wind parks, new hydropower plants, and are we going to put in jeopardy the level of our public debt to GDP ratio if we raise huge amounts of money? How are we going to treat natural gas and how are we going to secure decent prices of natural gas, electricity power as well? And I came here using electric car from Edinburgh to Glasgow, but how are we going to do mining and refining of lithium, nickel, cobalt and many, many other very important minerals? At the end, we all know what is our final aim, what is our final target. But it's not a fairy tale. We'll have to work a lot. We'll have to be 100% dedicated and uh, we'll have to be more honest to each other. Health of people living in Serbia depends directly on implementation of this agenda. Just like health and life of each living being in Earth depends on arrangements that will be reached here and on national implementation of the respective arrangements. The great William Shakespeare wrote that the Earth has music for those who listen. Perhaps it is the right time to listen and hear cry of the Mother Earth, because if we lose this race against time, our children will inherit irreparably polluted planet. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, dear President, once again. Thank you, Your Excellency.